Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Rohit and this is the day 5 of the JMeter training. In this day, we will today talk about that how we can set up um, our JMeter for API testing. In our last sessions, we talked about the assessions and then in the assessions, we discuss about that how we can validate the response uh, in the assessions. So today we will deep dive more and then using the deep, uh, using this assessor uh, discussions, we will discuss that how we can uh, set up our API into the JMeter and using the JMeter how we can actually do a API testing in our system. So for that what I'll do, I'll open the Postman and if you see this Postman, this is my Postman tools. Under the Postman tools, I have put one, um, I am going to hit one endpoint called JSON placeholder dot type for it, uh, this uh, placeholder and then based on this placeholder, whenever I'm, whenever I'm sending some request, I'm getting some response. Right, so this is the request I am doing, and I am getting the response with the status code of the 200. So this is the uh, the API call I am doing, and based on this value changes, let's say from one to two, if I do that, uh, I can uh, get the user ID different with the different title. So basically, I am calling to the API and I am getting the response. Now this validation I am going to do in my uh, JMeter. So let's uh, see how can we do that. So if I go back, uh, go back to my JMeter, I'm going to create a API test call or plan called API testing. Maybe this is my um, uh, test plan. And on this test plan, first I have to add the threads um, the way we did earlier. And then here, let's say I'm putting the thread count is the five. So five time I'm going to, or maybe five dummy user, I'm going to hit to that server. And then I have to right click and add. And here under this, uh, sampler I have to click the sampler and then put the HTTP request so once we put the HTTP request I'm going to hit a server and then the server uh, details I have to define that so these are the basic steps we have to do I'll go back to the postman here and then I will copy this server name so this is my server name I'll copy and paste here to my JMeter now what do you have to do? I will put this HTTPS things, I'll cut there and paste here and then remove all this part. So this is my HTTPS, this is my uh, placeholder, this is my uh, port number and then under that I have to put the path name. So let's say that um, in my case uh, my path uh, name is, uh, I'll copy from that uh, called slash to do and then uh, something called this on the way path name. I'll copy this path name and paste to my JMeter. So let's understand correctly what I am going to do or what I am doing the basically. With the five user, I am going to hit to this uh, server. Definitely the, this, uh, the number is static. I'm going to hit the five time. And based on this five time, I'm going to uh, display the value or um, I'll add the listener and then view tree and add one more listener uh, add listener and then here uh, view resilient table so these things I'm going to do that and I'll just run that so what will be happens so it will simply uh, based on this five user it will simply hit to the server with the static number and then once we hit that it will return the result so let's first do this simple step first and then i'll add the assessor after that so you can see that once i click that uh, run that it asking me to save that so i'll just save that so let's say that my test plan name i'm going to put that call uh, api uh, testing so this is my uh, uh, test plan name and now i'll simply run that so once we run that you can see all these requests have successfully uh, sent and then um, I got a response. So let's see that. So this is the first uh, uh, request I have sent and uh, if I click the request, so this is my request data and if I go to the response, this is my response data. And this response data have a JSON structure and then response have a header. You can see this is the uh, header response. And if you see the simpler result, if you click that under the simpler result, we get a response uh, port called uh, 200 and then response message called 200. So this is how the similar we have done earlier. Now um, in that case, what we'll do, uh, we are going to add the assessor, the simply way, uh, the simple assessor we can do that. So what I'll do, I'll right click add and then here I'll add the assertions. So for assertions, I'll go to here and then add the response assertions. Now in the response assessments, 
we can specifically um, implement that particular text or particular uh, thing. So let's uh, let's say that in this request or in this case, uh, what we are getting that response code equal to 200 we are getting, right? So we should get the response code equal to 200 for that. I'll select the response code and then under this uh, pattern to test, I'll add the 200 as a response code. Now, once we add that and then uh, run that and let's see that what is happening. So if I go back to the view result tree, uh, nothing changed really. Now, one thing you notice that once we uh, we done this comparison, there is nothing to be uh, expandable or nothing is expanded in this case, right? Why? Because this all are success, so nothing to be, um, uh, you know, nothing to be compared or nothing to be represent that it is error, right? So because uh, if you see that there is no difference between that whatever we are expecting or whatever value we are expecting, the same value we are receiving. So there is really nothing to be, uh, you know, compared with that. So that's the reason there is nothing uh, it's showing right now. So what I'll do here under this response assertions, I'll just click the not. So what I am expecting that not 200. Right, so which is wrong, and then all this test case that we, uh, if we run that, will be get failed, and you can see this all get failed, and it have a expanded features. I mean, expandable features. So if I expand that, you can see under this expand, you have a response assertions, and which will be compare between the actual value and then what we are expecting, and the why it failed. So basically, this way you can compare that actual request. And then what I am expecting and based on that, I can, uh, I mean, you can see that why it got failure. Similarly, in the result tree, you can see that all these requests, upcoming requests got failed because of this data structure changes. Now, one thing I just want to uh, highlight here that uh, if you see here our case that, so if you see here each request, when I am sending the request, always we are hitting to the two, right? If you see that I am hitting that value is two, it's a static value, it's not changeable, right? So in future classes, we also understand that how we can dynamically or programmatically change this value and hit that server. But at that moment, you can see that we are hitting that server, this uh, server with the five time. And then based on the five time, whatever value we are expecting, if that value is not showing, I um, mean, this if that value is not coming, we can represent that in our tabular format or tree format. If that value is uh, coming, the status will be okay. If that value is not coming, the status will be not okay. So this is the till the point we have learned that how we can even validate or test our API. In our upcoming video, we'll discuss that how we can validate the site. So if you see that, Whenever we are sending that some data and when I'm, uh, I'm uh, there is some latency and there is time time. So these things also can be validated. So we can as this, uh, you know, the JMeter is par used for the performance testing or the load testing. We should also know that whenever we are putting the load or whenever we are giving more user to that API, how much latency or how much time this server is taking that will uh, discuss in our further class. So till the point, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.